What's the mystery behind the pyramids being found in China today that look similar to the ones in Egypt and other African countries? Well, earlier, this fascinated archaeologists who constructed theories that Chinese and African civilizations might be related. However, a groundbreaking study of the people of China's genomic makeup has been deliberately ignored. Interestingly, this study was conducted about 25 years ago, revealing the truth that might be as surprising as shocking. This study was conducted by China's National Academy of Science in collaboration with the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston under the Chinese Human Genome Diversity Project. This revealed that today, Chinese people carry at least some portion of African DNA, which points toward only one thing. China has black roots. But could it be because of intermarriage or a trend in only a selected Chinese population? Well, the truth will shock you. Welcome to a new episode of Black Afric Diary, a channel where we talk about Black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. It's a place where you will see the real picture of Black Africa, its stories, and the events defining it. In this episode, we will tell you about the groundbreaking fact that China has Black African roots. Let's get started. The study we are talking about was conducted in 1998 and published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, offering a paradigm-shifting insight into the genetic origins of East Asian populations, including those in China. This research reinforced the out-of-Africa theory, which proposes that all modern humans descended from a common ancestral population that migrated out of Africa around 100,000 years ago. Building on these findings, Further research conducted by the Chinese Academy of Sciences analyzed the DNA of various Chinese ethnic groups. This research uncovered strong genetic connections between early human populations in China and Africa. By aligning with the out-of-Africa theory, the study provided additional evidence that the origins of all non-African populations, including those in China, trace back to Africa. For most people, this is unbelievable because the thought of China having African roots was never entertained. Yet, one of the study's significant discoveries involved Y-chromosome haplogroups. A large proportion of Chinese men were found to carry haplogroup O, which can be traced back to a common African ancestor. This haplogroup is dominant in East Asia and originated from a lineage that migrated out of Africa tens of thousands of years ago. Furthermore, within China, the haplogroup O3 sublineage is especially prevalent in Han Chinese populations, further linking them to ancient African lineages and demonstrating shared paternal ancestry between East Asians and Africans. The study also explored mitochondrial DNA, which is maternally inherited, to trace the maternal lineage of Chinese populations. Researchers identified haplogroup M, one of the oldest mitochondrial DNA lineages, in both African and Chinese populations. That's where you should know about the African Eve hypothesis, which proposes that all modern humans share a common maternal ancestor known as mitochondrial Eve, who lived in Africa around 200,000 years ago. This hypothesis is based on mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down exclusively through the maternal line and does not undergo recombination making it a reliable method for tracing maternal lineage far back in time. By comparing mitochondria DNA from populations around the world, scientists were able to trace the maternal ancestry of all modern humans back to Africa, reinforcing the concept of mitochondrial Eve. The hypothesis also suggests a genetic bottleneck, where a small group of humans survived a significant die-off event, and all modern humans are descended from this group. This further supports the African roots of all human populations, including those in East Asia. But things don't stop at genes only. Some scholars have proposed that early Chinese civilizations were either directly descended from black Africans or greatly influenced by African civilizations. Seeing history, the earliest recorded presence of black people in China dates back to the Tang Dynasty, which existed between 618 and 907 AD a period when China was a center for international trade and cultural exchange along the Silk Road. The Silk Road was a vast network of trade routes that connected China with Central Asia, 
Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. It facilitated the exchange of not only goods, such as silk, spices, and ceramics, but also the movement of people, ideas, and cultural influences. Historical records indicate that Black Africans, particularly from East Africa, traveled along the Silk Road to China during the Tang Dynasty. Africans were involved in trade, military service, and diplomatic missions. Some settled in major port cities like Guangzhou, where they became part of a diverse international community. Evidence of African traders and slaves living in China during this time is preserved in historical texts and depicted in art and artifacts from the period. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. During the Tang Dynasty, China was one of the most prosperous and powerful empires in the world. The presence of Africans and other foreigners contributed to the cultural dynamism of the time, as reflected in Chinese ceramics, murals, and historical accounts that depict dark-skinned people. This highlights the cosmopolitan nature of Tang Dynasty China and its openness to global influences. This creates the possibility that ancient Chinese populations had African ancestry or that Black Africans significantly influenced ancient Chinese civilizations. But there is another theory, known as the Black Shang Dynasty hypothesis, suggesting that the Shang Dynasty, which existed between 1600 and 1046 BCE, one of China's earliest historical dynasties, may have been founded by Black Africans or African-influenced peoples. This theory is based on interpretations of ancient Chinese texts and artifacts which some claim depict black individuals. In contrast to these alternative views, one of the most intriguing aspects of ancient Chinese history comes from the archeological discoveries at the Sangxingdui site in Sichuan province, which dates back to around 1600 to 1200 BCE. This site revealed a unique Bronze Age culture with artifacts such as masks and statues that feature exaggerated facial features including large noses and broad lips. Some have speculated that these features resemble African characteristics, fueling theories that there may have been an African influence on this culture. There are also claims of African influence in early Chinese history, such as the construction of pyramids in Xi'an, where nearly 100 pyramids have been found. Some scholars have speculated that these pyramids resemble those built in Africa, raising the possibility of African contributions to their construction. Additionally, some historical references point to black rulers in China, such as Emperor Fuxi, who is described as a woolly-haired figure credited with foundational contributions to Chinese society. But everything changed when an unexpected archaeological discovery was made. Just outside Beijing, a small limestone hill known as Dragonbone Hill quietly stands as a key piece of China's contribution to the study of human evolution. Though unassuming in appearance, this site played a crucial role in one of the most significant paleoanthropological discoveries of the 20th century. In 1929, researchers unearthed an ancient skull here that they initially estimated to be around half a million years old. This skull, later named Peking Man, became one of the earliest human remains ever found. For a time, it convinced many that humanity may have first evolved in Asia. However, things began to change when the research on Peking Man's skull revealed he had African origin. That's because the Peking Man belongs to Homo erectus, which evolved around two million years ago, with the first fossils of this species found in East Africa, in places like Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia, particularly at famous archeological sites like Kubi Fora and Olduvai Gorge. These discoveries show that the species originated in Africa before spreading elsewhere. Approximately 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus began to migrate out of Africa. This early migration marked one of the first major dispersals of human ancestors across continents. As these populations moved, they spread throughout Asia, Europe, and as far as Indonesia. Therefore, the discovery of the Peking Man in Jokudian, near modern-day Beijing, is one of the key pieces of evidence for this migration. Despite living in China, P. 
Peking man retained physical traits that are strikingly similar to those found in early Homo erectus fossils in Africa. Characteristics like a prominent brow ridge, thicker skull bones, and a larger brain case suggest that the Peking man shared a common evolutionary ancestor with their African counterparts. These similarities point to a shared origin, emphasizing the deep African roots of this early human population. At this point, it is well established that China has African roots. This is supported by a genetic study showing that 97.4% of modern Chinese DNA originates from ancestral populations that migrated from Africa, with the remaining portion linked to extinct hominins like Neanderthals and Denisovans. As population geneticist Li Hui explains, if Homo erectus in China had contributed significantly to modern East Asian ancestry, this would be evident in the genetic data, which it currently is not. What do you think after knowing this? Can all the population in the world trace its roots to Africa? Isn't it true that the theory that humans rose first in Africa and went to inhabit other parts of the world stands proven now? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on the fact that having African DNA no matter what ethnicity a person has, proves that no concept of race exists and all humans are the same. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.